When I started out in design, I was really interested in typography and I thought of myself not as a typographer because I didn't design fonts, but I really was in love with the way that words looked. But as I grew older, I realized I'm not really interested in typography as much as I'm interested in language and the power of language. And that's, the, that's my perfect playground, is to work with words in order to get them to come up off of the page and literally cast a shadow or to be made out of something tactile so that maybe they can in enter into our world along with us and have a life and have a little bit of more dimensional meaning and maybe that instills in them a little power or a little more memory. I really believe in letting go of logic or slipping away from reason and reality. And in one presentation of our work, I showed a, uh, a Venn diagram, but it was actualized and three-dimensionalized as three colored stools, a red one, a blue one, and a yellow one. And they came together in a perfect triangle in the middle. The idea was that each of the dots represented an idea. There was magic, there was nonsense and there was macrame. And channeling just a little bit to another part of the brain which is not so linear or sequential so that a little bit of nonsense can kind of kickstart an idea like, like pulling an engine and, and having it rev up and go. Nonsense can give it life and can add to the levity of magic. Magic for me is really an important part of design because I strive to make designs that defy gravity, that actually lift up off the page or off the planet and, be, and participate in the ether of idea or fun. Macrame is when I use my hands to find an idea. Very often I do projects that are not related to work and they're just explorations and I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where it will lead, but very often just by spending a lot of meditative time following my fingers, it'll take me to some crazy solution that then has some resonance somehow with people and then I try to package that secret sauce and bring that back into the work that we do. The funnest new horizon that we've been working in is environmental graphics, which is wonderful for me because it brings together graphic design, architecture, sculpture, and very often the public. How can I infiltrate the space with a story instead of smacking another sign in the world, another visual signal? How do we work viscerally and kind of coat the surfaces that are there so that an idea or a story or a narrative might beckon to an audience, tap them on the shoulder and say, yoo-hoo. One of the projects we're working on now is the uh, aquarium at Coney Island for the New York Aquarium, part of the Wildlife Conservation Society. We are gonna have an artist called Ned Kahn wrap this building with 48,000 little aluminum tiles the size of a post-it. They're suspended on wires and they flicker in the gentlest breeze and when they do that they reflect the sun and then they reflect shadow so the surface of the building will look like the surface of the water it's going to be it you know it's a non-tech solution for the beach who wants to put leds next to all that salt water and sand it's going to be this evocative magnetic building which actually reinforces the mission of the, the wildlife conservation society that when that comes together to me that's magic for me, my whole design career is about telling stories. We did an installation in Grand Central Terminal celebrating the 19th Amendment, which granted women the right to vote. We installed the text of the amendment in eight-foot letters in vinyl on the floor. When, you, when the 500,000 people walk through there a day, you couldn't see, because you're only five, six feet high, you couldn't read the whole thing, but thank goodness, the text ends with the word sex. So just because of the scale and the context, we got people to read part of the Constitution of the United States without them even knowing it. That's the kind of seduction that I live for. 
The thing I really like about my studio is that it's a total mess. It is not like a designer studio at all. We are not neat nicks. It is a laboratory. It's all about experimentation. The staff is so tolerant of me because they never know what they're going to find when they come in because one day I'm carving plaster and another day I'm, I'm making a new paint by number that's got Michelle Obama in it for the New Yorker coming up soon. But the lovely thing about the studio is the hybridization of these stories and that we try to be authentic and passionate and bring to all of our projects a little bit of humanity and a little bit of wit.